Hello, this is a video about the web interface of a BT Smart Hub 2. Mainly is going to be useful for anyone who has to support somebody with a BT Smart Hub and needs to know what the web interface looks like. So you access it by default on 192.168.1.254 and it gives you a lot of status uh, on the smart on the first screen without having to log in. The first thing I'm going to do, which is the one I get asked most often, is how do you turn wireless off and on? This is fairly obvious on the BT Hub. You click on the wireless icon, or wireless box on the screen, click on change settings. At this point you will be asked for the password, which is on the sticker on the back of the BT Hub. Wait for the page to load and you can just turn off the 5 gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz and save that should you need to. And then obviously to turn them back on just put the sliders to on again. On this screen you've got the wireless name and also the wireless password Going back to the first screen, weirdly, takes you back to the advanced settings, so we'll just go back to the standard home screen. Top left you have the broadband status. On mine, sadly, it's not connected to a broadband line, so I can't show you what it would look like if it were connected, but if it's unplugged from the broadband or if the broadband is having trouble, this is the screen you'll see. There's broadband voice is the box below the broadband status. There's no user configurable stuff there, so you click on it, absolutely nothing happens. Moving over to the My Devices section, that will show you devices which are connected to the hub and whether they're plugged in via the network ports, plugged in via USB, or via Wi Fi. clicking on change settings and then clicking on IPv4 gives you the LAN settings for the router and the DHCP range and how long the leases for the computers are. Address table just tells you what DHCP leases the router has given out. You have hub light control, so if it's in a bedroom or something that you don't want light, or somewhere where you don't want light, you can change the brightness of it, or entirely turn it off, or put it on a schedule indeed, so that it will be off between, for example, the hours of 1am and 7am. Broadband performance tests won't work in my case, because we're not connected to the internet. The smart setup is one of the first things I change wherever I set up a BT Hub. The smart setup is the thing where the first time a computer or a phone or a tablet or possibly even a games console or a TV connects to the internet, it gets offered a screen by BT about all of the wonderful things that BT does and setting up potentially, I think it sets up McAfee and, and other things that you get as extra features with BT. Generally, when people type in a password to Wi-Fi, they just want to get online, and you don't want to have to click through to bypass all of these offers. So it's generally a very good idea to turn Smart Setup off if you want the easiest experience to connect to the internet. There's an option to restart the BT Hub, so you don't have to go over and switch it off and on at the wall. And then finally, the advanced settings section. In advanced settings under broadband you get interestingly the option to change the username and password ah, there we go I, I thought they weren't going to be that generous uh, Wow. 
that um, disappointing, but it's in line with what they've done with every other uh, BT hub where you can't use it on any other provider. The business hubs might be different and have a different firmware where that does work, uh, but yeah, the home ones haven't worked that way. Moving on, you have a VPN option which forces any uh, IKE traffic to be on UDP port 500 rather than moving around, which may make some very strange VPN setups work correctly. You have Dynamic DNS, which supports quite a few services, DNS Omatic, DynDNS, No IP, Change IP, Easy DNS, and Zone Edit. Back to advanced options and going into wireless, doesn't give you any different options. Going into the My Disks option, I don't have any extra disks to test with, but if you were sent the Wi-Fi extenders that BT provide in their wireless disk form, this is where you would add them. Under Firewall, you can create port forwards through to other devices. Once you've filled in this line, you need to make sure that you press the green slash blue uh, plus with the circle around it, and then click on save at the top. And there we go. To remove a port forward, you press the red cross. Under configuration, you can set a DMZ where it will forward every single port through to that computer or device. And if you really need to, it generally causes more trouble than it fixes. You can turn on the SIP application layer gateway. Back to the advanced settings and the My Network. We have already been through these screens. Under technical log, it's got the status of the broadband and wireless and under event log all the events that have happened access control so parental controls doesn't seem to be applied within the router anymore In the IPv6 section, you'd be able to configure IPv6. It definitely works by default on most, if not all, BT broadband lines these days. And finally, onto the systems screen where you can change your BT Hub administration password. You can back up and restore the configuration. And you can factory reset the BT Hub from this screen. And there we have it. That's most of the administration screens on the BT Smart Hub 2 web admin interface. If this video has been useful to you, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. And if you are after other videos, such as what's in the box that it comes in, or how to factory reset it using a paperclip, have a look in the video description for some links to those videos as well. Have a great day.